Welcome back guys! Today we're going to build our ultimate Raspberry Pi setups and I'm going to do two different setups today and one of them are with a PoE powered um, device and the other one is with the MSATA and with the battery backup itself. If we take the PoE powered here this one is really really neat because it have active cooling with the fan and it's a small device and can be powered directly over ethernet. You don't need anything else except for that. I would be using this one for everywhere where I need a camera or a raspberry, just some simple device going on. It's rather cheap, costs a little bit more than doing it with a normal power supply like this one. Uh, this one is compact, easy to use, go for it. We have two memory cards, two Raspberry Pis and I'm choosing the 4 gig version because I want the fastest Raspberry Pi that you could get for this. I have one Poe hat, I have the MSATA SSD shield and of course I have an SSD M2 drive here as well. I have this battery pack that we will incorporate as well and for the Poe I have this homemade 3D printed case that we will be using. Some accessories that might be in handy of course. And let's see what we can do about it. First we're going to start with the Poe hat and build that one up. Let's, let's take one of those. The Raspberry Pi 4 is quite the same as the Raspberry Pi 3 except for the mini HDMI and that the ports have switched all around. With that said, the performance of the Raspberry Pi 4 is a lot better, especially when you have 4 gig of RAM for the purpose that we are going for here. Let's pick out the Pui hat. We have the standoffs. And you have the Pui hat itself. So first of all, we need to mount the stands on this one here. Next part is this Poe hat and you can see that you have the header pin here and you have the small four pins header here. The 4 pin header is this one up here and that's basically where you get the power from the ethernet jack and then distribute it towards the pin header here. If you attach those together like this you will see that the pin header here is no longer available for anything above. So if you want any accessories to put on top here you need to make sure you have an extender. For instance the extenders I bought here they can be placed on top of this one and then made it possible to penetrate through this one here as you can see so you get another pin header stacked on top. I'm not going to do this today because I'm not going to have anything attached to this pin header on this Raspberry Pi. But if you want you can always buy these pin headers and attach them on top like this. Note that the one I have here does not work with the existing distances that is included in the kit. I will link down below the correct ones that have the correct height so you can get them if you want. Attaching the Poe hat is rather simple. Just make sure you find the correct spot and then press them together. So that's basically it. Screws on top I now have the Raspberry Pi here, so let's see and try to plug in the Ethernet cable. Of course I'm using PoE enabled switches because otherwise it wouldn't work. So if we take the Raspberry Pi, take the cable itself, plug it in, you will see that the light turns on and the fan just briefly started to spin a little bit. Of course this won't work right now because as you can see I do not have any SD card inserted. 
So let ourselves take the SD card and get some software onto it and get this bastard loading, I would say. So let's take a look at and download the software that we are going to use today. I'm going to use the Raspbian, of course. Uh, that's my favorite. And what I'm going to download, I'm not going to use the desktop version. Uh, you can do that if you want. I prefer to use the Raspbian Lite version without the desktop because that one is smaller and works really, really great. And when going to the download section, you, you then click the Raspbian here. And you can download the different versions. I'm going with the light version here, so let me download the zip file. When downloaded, you show it and you need to extract it. And I'm going to extract it in this folder here, as you can. So here we have it. I'm then going to start Win32 Disk Imager. I do like this software, it just works. Uh, I'm going to look for the file that I just extracted. Uh, make sure you choose the correct device. Depending on how many devices you have. Depending on how many devices you have, this can vary a little bit. But I know that the card I inserted have a boot folder since before or a boot device. So I know this is the I colon. So let me choose that one. And then we press right. Yes, and let's go ahead. Depending on the speed of your card, this can vary a lot. I'm choosing the extreme cards. You can see I'm writing quite fast. If you buy this cheap once, it might not be faster than 20 meg per second. When the write is successful, you need to do a couple of changes on the card. So let's bring out the explorer again, browse to that boot folder that is now written with a new configuration and we need to go into the config.txt. The first thing that we need to add is a line down below here. And the thing is that the fan on the Raspberry Pi 4 and the PoE hat will turn on very very early. So we're going to add a line down below here that looks like this. This basically sets the fan speed to not turn on until we reach 65 degrees Celsius. And the second speed starts at 68 degrees Celsius. This makes it a lot more comfortable to be in that room. You save this file and the next thing you need to do is create a new file. I'm going to create a text document and I make sure to change the whole name to SSH. And I do this so I can actually log into the Raspberry Pi via the SSH protocol because I don't have any UI available. Save that one. Yes, and we can now extract the card and put it into the Raspberry Pi. So I'm inserting the card into the Raspberry Pi. If I can get it in. Like that, and then I insert the PoE cable or the Ethernet cable once again. You can see that it starts up. When this is done, it's time to find the Raspberry Pi. If you are a little bit lucky, you can basically ping the Raspberry Pi directly. This of course depend, depends on your local network at home. As you can see here, I get a reply from Raspberry Pi directly via my IPv6 controller. If this happens as you get it through the IPv6, you can define version 4 instead. And here you can see my IPv4 address to the Raspberry Pi. If this doesn't work, there are plenty of tools out there and I leave you to find it. Let's log into Raspberry Pi now. I bring up my putty and I add the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Of course, you could have used the DNS as well. We now get the login and we accept that. And we get the login. You log in with our default username and password and you are in like Flynn. This is basically the Raspberry Pi PoE and it works really, really great. 
You just power it directly over Ethernet and that's really cool. Thanks guys for watching this video. Hopefully you like this video. In the next one I will be doing another great tutorial where we actually add I would say we are going to build this ultimate system here the same as Andrea Spice did in his video. The difference here is that I'm going to add a couple of tools for our solar systems as well and some small changes to Andrea Spice's own setup. Stay tuned for that one and hopefully this video wasn't too long and don't forget to subscribe, press the notification button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!